Okay, so welcome back to the workshop. Um, last time I did a video was on Friday, which was when we were in Sangarema. I hope you saw it. It was a really encouraging meeting to get such clarity and honesty from the district medical officer about why these two motorbike ambulances that were at his property at that site, why they weren't working, and another two that are in a different council also weren't working. Unfortunately, on the way back from Sangarema, I took the bus because I dislocated my shoulder a week ago. I wasn't really able to ride. It was still quite painful. I took the bus back to Mwanza, which is only a half an hour journey to get back to the ferry. On the way, I was on the bus, front seat, on this big coach. And long story short, there was a boy, a school, secondary school aged boy, lying across the road, across the road for incoming, oncoming traffic, having a massive seizure. He was face down in a ditch, completely on his own, and clearly needed some help. We didn't stop. And I got really upset about that, because to me, you never leave somebody who, especially not a child, who, is, who, who needs help like that. But I asked the passengers and the driver, like, why haven't we stopped? Basically what they said was, what can we do? The boy's dying anyway, that's their thought. Um, but also, what, what, what do we do? And apart from the other issues around all of that, and the fact that I know there's some perceptions here that if you're having a seizure, maybe you're possessed by witchcraft, that's a whole separate thing. The point is, I just come from somewhere where there were two broken down motorbike ambulances doing nothing. There were a 15 minute ride away. If people had known, oh actually we could phone that number and someone will come and take care of the situation and maybe help this boy to stop him dying of a seizure, of whatever cause it is, or get getting run over by a car, which is very likely, then that, that didn't have to happen. And quite honestly, I never want to see that again. I, it was horrible and I never want to see that happening again. So what I'm thinking right now is rather than, you know, the DMO thankfully was really honest with me about the limitations of the budget coming through from the, from the government to pay for repairs and the chance of getting hold of genuine spare parts, which is very low basically. It frustrates the hell out of me that there are 400 of those motorbikes all around the country sitting generally rotting. So my idea is can I maybe buy one of these things for a very fair price second hand used from the district offer to refurbish it, to, to, to maintain it and to use it as an example for maybe six months and maybe they pay for the driver and the fuel or something, but just say, look, this is going to be my example of how this infrastructure can run and it can serve the community and help people so you never have a boy having a seizure face down your ditch on the about to get run over by a mini rest ever again. And we can use this as an example of regular maintenance work, so these motorbikes work, but you need to ride them properly and maintain them properly. And maybe then we can take this to the government and say, look, let's roll this out and let's stop this horrible stuff from happening and maybe that can work. So an interest of time, I'm going to leave it there, but it was a bit of a difficult weekend to say the least. I was pretty upset. Apparently that boy did get rescued in the end by somebody. I sent a car out to look for him. He wasn't there, so that's something, but still. Anyway, back in the workshop this week, we are finally going to leave the floor. I've been a bit busy the last two weeks, but we're going to crack on. I'm going to leave it there, but um, all your thoughts and comments, please share them with me. Um, and um, we'll hopefully have some good news about the progress here in the next few days. Thank you guys.